like I said, our, our session today is going to be apply assess action and it's going to be all about how Innova Healthcare, who we're going to learn about today, has transformed the way that they do recruiting with the use of actionable dashboards. So as we start this presentation, as we start to see the content, the challenges that they were facing, where the solutions started to come from, um, I do want to challenge, uh, challenge you as, as audience members. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to make any of you come up and, and sing a song of my choosing, um, unless you, know, you want to, uh, then you can do that. Um, but no, the, the challenges that we're going to go through that Innova was having, these are not common, I mean, these are not uncommon challenges. These are challenges that recruiting organizations across the country, internationally, they're all facing these challenges. So start to draw those parallels between these challenges that you're going to see your own and really start to see how this solution can work. So, like I said, I just want to introduce myself before. My name is Andrew. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, where I serve as a team lead as well as a functional consultant at Arclight Consulting. Um, a little bit about us at Arclight. We're a national enterprise solution delivery firm, and our focus is really around providing cloud solutions that enable organizations to elevate, transform, and grow their business. Um, I will have my contact information up at the end and that QR code as well. Feel free to scan it to learn a little bit about our organization. And definitely feel free to reach out if you have any questions about the presentation um, or any of the other work that we do. Happy to, happy to connect. All right, so let's set the scene a little bit here. Let's learn about Innova. Who are they? How do they, what, what do they do? And then a little bit about their Oracle footprint. And then we'll start to look and, and take a, an examination of their challenges. So Innova Healthcare, my friends over at Innova, they are the largest provider of nonprofit uh, healthcare in Northern Virginia. Um, they have frequently been recognized for their excellence in healthcare and the wonderful care they provide to their patients. Um, and have a repu reputation for being a provider of absolutely world-class health care for the region. Um, they're great. If you're ever in Northern Virginia, you fall and break your leg, go and, uh, go and stop by my friends at Nova to help you out. Um, a little bit about their Oracle footprint. They went live with Oracle Cloud Recruiting back in early 2021. Um, they also went live with, with Core HR and a couple other modules. Pretty successful go live, of course, some, some hiccups along the way. Um, but as they, you know, as they went live, as the recruiters, as the leadership started to engage with Oracle Recruiting as a tool, some kind of challenges, some inefficiencies, some discrepancies in, in workflow, uh, shall I say, that the recruiters were starting to notice were, were kind of percolating up. Um, they were causing some roadblocks. They were causing some inefficiencies in their, in their own process and in their own organization. Um, and those kind of just became pretty obvious to the team as they started to use the tool. Um, vast improvement from what they were coming from, but just needed to be catered a, a little bit more to, to suit their process. So their challenges. Um, as you see them start to pop up on the screen here, You'll notice I've grouped them into three main categories, and these categories are kind of the crux um, of the issues that they were facing as, as a recruiting organization. Um, so starting off with our first, our first section, our holistic visibility challenge that they were facing, while Oracle Recruiting had all this wonderful data, right? It has everything about the candidate, everything about the requisition, it's all there they were finding that they were having a difficult time looking at all that information holistically. Um, they were finding that their recruiters were working on a rec, requisition by requisition by requisition basis or application by application basis, uh, and that they didn't really have a full understanding of their entire recruiting ecosystem, their entire workload, their entire candidate load. Uh, so that's kind of you know, where that challenge, what challenge started for them. Um, additionally, the, limiting, the limited sorting and filtering options that were inherent in ORC were holding them back a bit. Uh, ANOVA is a very high volume, fast paced recruiting environment. So not being able to drill down to filter out unapplicable data in a quick and meaningful way uh, just meant that that process was going to get delayed. So that was a pretty, a pretty big issue for them. Um, and then those two challenges combined kind of started to make the workload of the recruiters unclear. They weren't sure their overall workload. How many applicants did they have um, at, any, at any stage in the candidate selection process? 
what were they looking at in terms of, of timeline for these applicants, those kind of things they, were, they weren't able to uh, identify. So that leads us directly actually into our, our next challenge, the efficiency crisis um, that Innova was facing as, you know, in, their, in their recruiting world. Um, the unclear workload left their action items to be, uh, you know, to be a little bit ambiguous. They knew these were recruiters. These were, you know, people that were used to processing candidates. They're used to interviewing, moving candidates along. Um, and their, however, their system wasn't necessarily reflecting that process and outlining those steps for them. Um, so their action items became somewhat ambiguous and, and, and difficult to determine. Um, additionally, their prioritization, they were kind of confused with their prioritization. They were asking the kinds of questions like, how long have these candidates been sitting in the rec? How long has it been since we've contacted? How long has it been since this candidate was moved? Um, those kind of questions they were asking and they weren't able to get an answer. So that was, that was kind of leading to, the, to a slowdown in candidate overall processing. Um, and then additionally, you know, as, we, as many of you know, anyone out here that uses cloud recruiting, it's not just the recruiters that are using the tool, it's the hiring managers. These are the people that are interviewing uh, candidates, bringing them into their team, and they had to, you know, they had to have a as equal uh, part in the candidate selection process. The system was set, the way that the system was configured for them, um, these two parties, the recruiters and the hiring managers, they weren't able to talk to each other. They were not uh, having an understanding of each other's responsibilities, which led to some bottlenecks since one party wasn't necessarily sure what the other was responsible for. And then our final, our final big bucket challenge that we have, uh, that we have up here is our candidate data uh, access, a more candidate data access issue. So this kind of is on the opposite end of the spectrum of our holistic visibility issue. There was certain data points, key fields that their recruiters were looking at day in and day out on every single application. Um, when considering a candidate for a fit, for, for a rec, or for a position. Um, and they were finding that, you know, there's one thing in this menu, one thing in that submenu. You have to go all over the place to find the stuff that they're looking for every single day. Um, so finding a way to bring that information all into one place was, was kind of key for them. Additionally, their uh, recruiters didn't really have a good insight into the historical information regarding candidates. So they are, you know, looking at this candidate that's applied to a requisition. They weren't necessarily having the best insight due to the, you know, to the data being a little bit scattered um, into ha has this person applied for a rec in the past? If so, what was that rec? Were they rejected? If so, why? Those kind of questions they were having some difficulty answering. And then finally, the, uh, the challenge that they were facing when our recruiters went to evaluate candidates uh, was they didn't really have a sight line into their other cross-requisition activity. So they might be looking at a candidate, they're considering them for position A, while the candidate actually on position B, the requisition for that, is a, an offer is being drafted for them. They wouldn't know that. Um, and of course, that's going to impact that candidate's uh, that's can that candidate's, you know, um, position on the on the rec. So, those kind of things they weren't able to grasp. They weren't able to get too easily, which was kind of you know what led them to to this challenge. So, from the ch from all the challenges that they were facing, you'll see a bunch of issues that kind of sprouted from these challenges. Our recruiters were having some navigational difficulty. They were having trouble accessing the data they needed to in the system. Um, candidates were sitting stagnant. They were sitting in this, the candidate selection process too long. They were sitting without replies, without consideration. And um, you know, some, of, some of their key data points were also overlooked. So all these issues that you see up there really center around that big one in the middle, um, which every recruiting organization's worst enemy is, is lost talent. Um, and like I said, if you remember a couple slides ago, Innova went live in early 2021. So if anybody remembers the labor market in early 2021, pretty competitive, right? Candidates were in the driver's seats. We were in the middle of the great resignation. So any amount of time that your candidate was sitting stagnant, any amount of time you weren't actively engaging with that candidate meant 
the time that you allow for your competitor, for your, you know, for another organization to swoop in and grab that candidate, it's just going to increase. So this is a pretty fundamental issue for them, uh, which is, of course, what led us to, to the need to create the solution. So what was the solution? Um, looking at all of the challenges, all of the issues that we were facing, um, ANOVA and, and ArcLight kind of got together. We, were, we did a deep dive into the root cause of some of these problems. And what we found was it was really around people that are involved in this process and people that are using the tool, not having the right access to the information in a way that's going to be conducive to them doing their job. Um, so it was about bringing the right data to the right audience, presented in the right way, so that they could evaluate appropriately and then act, um, act accordingly from there. Um, and we found that, you know, just, just from exploring our different options, that OTBI dashboards were going to be our best way to do that. It was something Innova already had. It was something that is included with recruiting. Um, so we, we decided per, to pursue the, uh, this, pro, this, pro, this project with OTBI dashboards. So, like many solutions, uh, I'm sure, as you all know, it is not typically a one-size-fits-all. There are different audiences, different considerations that play up here. So we had to make sure that our tool was designed in a way that it was going to cater to the needs of each specific person uh, in, in the candidate selection process. So first, we had to, uh, you know, the, the main focus was on providing recruiters with the tools that they needed. So the recruiter dashboard focused around recruiters, providing them with all of their key information, all of their key data points. Uh, and bringing it forward in a way that was going to be conducive to the way that they work. Candidate information dashboard also geared towards recruiters, but really just that catch-all that we were just talking about for all that key data, all those key considerations that they were looking at in every single application, it's going to be the landing place for, for all of that information. And then, bless you. Uh, and then finally, the hiring manager dashboard. Again, they have a very integral part in the candidate selection process, so we need to make sure they have the tools that they need as well. So a little bit about these dashboards. Um, these were not dashboards that, are design that were designed in the traditional sense where it's so overarching, it's really designed for higher level reporting. You're going to be sending it to your CHRO, your director of talent acquisition. Uh, these were not the kind of tools we were looking to create. We were looking to create tools that were going to be the frontline tool for the frontline worker. So these are the, the recruiters, the hiring managers, they're the ones actually engaging with candidates, actually making this candidate selection process happen. Um, so that was, that was what we wanted to, to design the tools around. Um, we, throughout the entire process, we really wanted to keep a couple of key goals in mind. We wanted to have a focus around actionability want to make sure that not, they not only had the information that they need, but then they had a way to easily and efficiently uh, act upon that information. Um, and we really want to make sure that this was going to be built to drive their workflow. This was going to be the, the tool that they were using day in and day out to actually uh, engage with candidates and engage with ORC. So with that, we'll now do a little bit of a deep dive. We're going to look at the dashboards, see how they look, see how they feel, see how they interact with each other, how they interact with, uh, with the different user groups, and start to get a real understanding. Um, so for, for now, we're all going to pretend we're recruiters. We're going to put on our recruiter hats, and we're going to log into our to, uh, Oracle Recruiting um, in, our, in our demo pod here just to kind of see what the dashboard's looking like from the perspective of a recruiter and how it's going to help them do their job. So again, screen I'm sure everyone in here is very familiar with. We're going to log in as our recruiter, um, and then we're going to go over and access Oracle Cloud Recruiting. Again, this is something that recruiting teams that are already using this tool are pretty familiar with, uh, you know, something that they're already used to doing. Once our page loads up here and Oracle Cloud Recruiting actually loads, this is where you're going to start to see some of the differences, right? Usually you're landing on a list of requisitions that your recruiters have on their plate. Now they're brought to this dashboard. It's embedded right into the, to the UI of uh, Oracle Cloud Recruiting. 
and it's going to have all sorts of graphs, charts, data, and filters that are really designed to bring that key information that the recruiters are looking at to the forefront. One thing I really do want to emphasize with these tools is they are by no means in any way to, you know, designed to replace anything in Oracle recruiting. Um, they're really just designed to be an optimization and enhancement that allows the tool to be, to be used in a way that's going to be more conducive to the way that our recruiters and our hiring leadership um, was looking to, to work and structure their workload. So firstly, up at the top, if you remember from, our, from some of our challenges, they were having a hard time filtering, um, drilling down to key information. We've solved that by, by uh, introducing that whole suite of filters they have there at the top. So our recruiters, when they log in, they're going to see all the data that's pertinent to them, so all of the applications, all of the requisitions that are pertinent to them. And then they're going to be able to filter using the filters at the top, and the entire dashboard is going to update to reflect the contents of those filters. So for example, um, maybe I'm a recruiter, I've logged in, I've started my day. However, there's a couple of my colleagues that are out of office. They want to have me help with some of their workload while they're out. All I'd have to do, go to that recruiter name filter, select my colleagues' names, and then you'll see the entire dashboard is going to update to the contents uh, that pertains to that specific demographic. So now we're looking at our colleagues' requisitions, our colleagues' applications, and we're able to help them. Now that, uh, that's just a taste of the filters. That's going to be true for any of the other filters you select. The entire dashboard is going to update accordingly. So let's, uh, let's reset back to our, to our landing page here. We'll just, just uh, go back to our default values here. Um, if you remember back again, one of the challenges that they were really facing was that outlining of action items. They knew what they had to do from a process perspective, but the system wasn't telling them where and, and when to do that. So to solve that, if you see all the way at the top, the first line they're presented with is all of their action items. So these are all the spots in the candidate selection process where recruiters, the users of this dashboard, are going to actually have to go in and take action on candidates. So maybe they have to go review a new application, draft an offer, um, disposition candidates that have been rejected by hiring leaders, whatever it is, uh, all the spots in that CSP are going to be clearly outlined and it's going to show them all of the information across all requisitions. So they're no longer looking at things on a rec by rec by rec basis, they're looking at it holistically, aren't really understanding their entire workload. So again, we've taken a look at our dashboards, we've taken a look at our action items, some of the graphs and charts that we have. That's all well and good, but we need to see the information that's behind it. So our recruiter that we're logged in as notices that they have 6,200 applications in this new to be reviewed bucket. Um, for any recruiters, hopefully you never have to deal with that many applications all at once. Um, but this case we do in our demo instance, but um, we have our, our bucket of 6,200 candidates that are new to be reviewed. Now again, these are across all our requisitions. We want to see the requisition information, the candidate application information pertaining to that. All we'll have to do is click on that 6,200 figure. And then up pops this table. And this is going to be a table listing out all of those applications that make up that 6200 figure. So these are all the candidates. They've applied. They've submitted their application. They haven't been reviewed yet. It's going to give you a listing there. Um, you'll notice there's a whole mess of columns uh, in, this, in this table designed to bring in keys, key data points around the requisition, the application. This is, again, not a one-size-fits-all. If, if there was a circumstance where maybe the recruiting team's priorities change, they're looking at different things, these can be kind of switched, swapped, and changed around for any, for, with any reportable field in OTBI. So anything that o OTBI is reporting on with Oracle Recruiting, you can put in this table. You'll also notice that our recruiters now have a quick and easy way to see how long these candidates have been sitting stagnant. So not only do they have the key where they're able to, to do it by, you know, the different buckets, you know, five days, 10 to five days, more than, more than that. Uh, they're also able to see the exact calculation of how long this candidate's been sitting 
and this allows them to prioritize which candidates they're going to focus on first. So if we have a candidate that's been sitting in there four days and another candidate that just applied 20 minutes ago, we're going to want to focus on our candidate that's been sitting there longer so we reduce the risk of losing that candidate. So we have all this information before us. We're able to, we're able to take a look. But ultimately, we do have to take action on this candidate on their application. So we're going to have to go in, into the system and do that. Now, this table provides a quick, easy, and simple way to get there. All our recruiter is going to have to do, and we'll take our, our top candidate for our example here, Brad Baker, who's applied for the senior HR analyst role. Um, we've checked out all the, all the contents of Brad's row. We want to actually go look at Brad's application. All we're going to have to do is click on that Go to Candidate Profile button. And then, um, voila, up will pop Brad's actual application in Oracle Cloud Recruiting. So this is going to be Brad Baker's specific application on that senior HR analyst role that we were looking at. Now, again, looks a little bit different, right? This isn't the stock landing page for when you're accessing an application. It looks, you know, there's a, there's a couple tables, there's a couple, you know, other key information points that aren't typical. Um, that's because this actually will transition us into our next dashboard, which is going to be our candidate information dashboard. So if you remember, the purpose of, of this dashboard is really to be that catch-all spot for our recruiters to bring in all the information that they're looking at, that in the past they were navigating through all those side menus uh, to access into one spot, easy to see right at the beginning. So they have uh, a quick view into the contact information for this candidate. If they want to reach out by phone or email, that information is right in front of them. They know how this candidate applied. Were they external? Were they internal? They have an insight into that. Um, below that, the application history section, this was designed to solve that problem of them not having insight into those past applications, those past rejections, as well as current requisitions, right? What other requisitions are they on now? They're able to see all their past requisition uh, application information, uh, as well as any other ongoing requisitions that they might be a part of. Down below, we have a listing out of all of the screening questions. Um, in the case of Innova, they put a lot of emphasis on the responses that their candidates were providing in these questions during the time of application. Uh, so bringing those front and center was, was pretty critical just so our recruiters don't have to navigate to another menu. They're going to be looking at it every day. Why not bring it right in front of them? So they're able to see all those, all those uh, screening question responses. And then finally, if you look up at the top here, you'll actually notice that uh, for this particular candidate, there's a call out for an active offer. Um, that's because Brad Baker, he's a, we're currently looking at his application for senior HR analyst. He actually has an offer being drafted for him on another rec that a recruiter might not have had insight to. So the recruiter can now see this notification, see which requisition they have an offer being drafted for them on, and then reach out to that recruiter, take any necessary steps, and of course use that for, for any consideration for the role. So this dashboard, that's our, that's our candidate information dashboard. Not as flashy, not as fancy as what we were just looking at with the recruiting dashboard, but really just designed to be that informational spot, right? The spot where recruiters are going to land, they're going to see the key information they're looking at every day, and they're going to have an easy way to access that. All right, so jumping back now, we've looked at Brad. Of course, in a real setting, we're probably going to go to that actions menu, move them along in the process, disposition them, whatever it is. Um, for our purposes, we're just going to go back to our, our table that we came from here. So again, all the candidates in that new to be reviewed bucket. Um, one other cool feature I want to show you is, is you know, maybe our, our recruiters looking at the row, they're looking at Brad Baker's application. They don't want to go directly to his application. Maybe they want to go to the entire requisition that he's applied for. They're able to do that. Uh, in the first column, it's going to be similar. All they'll have to do is click on that go to requisition button, and then up is going to pop that specific rec. Um, 
So again, this is now a little bit more familiar for anyone using Oracle Recruiting. All of the key menus, submenus related to the rec are there. Any actions you need to take, all right there. So just an easier way to get, to get these recruiters into the system, into the right spot that they need to be. <coughs> all right, so that was, you know, so again, back to our dashboard. We'll just do one, one final glance. Our action items up, up at the top. I want to note too that all these other graphs and charts, which are designed to show uh, information like how long have candidates been sitting, where are my recs sitting in the approval process, how long have my recs have been open, these are all drillable. Anything that they need to get down to, they're going to be able to click on that. It's going to bring up a similar table displaying the appropriate content, and then it's going to bring them, uh, provide them with the links to get to where they need to go. Um, so really, again not necessarily the best tool for you know, your, senior, your senior people, but that's not what it was for. It's, it's for your recruiters to have what they need to get their job done. So that was our recruiter focus. So our, our recruiter focus was our first two dashboards, our recruiter dashboard, which we, just, which we just came from, as well as the candidate information dashboard. Now let's take a look and see what our hiring leaders have. Um, the, they also need to have the tools that they need to succeed. So let's, let's log in now as a hiring leader um, who happens to have the same name and, uh, and see what they have for them. So again, similar screen here. We're going to log in as our hiring manager. We're going to go over and access Oracle Recruiting, this time from my team since we're a hiring manager. Um, again, very familiar process to anyone who has recruiting teams currently using Oracle Recruiting. So again, looks a little bit different. We're now going to see our hiring manager dashboard instead of that list of recs. And this is going to be all of that information relating to hiring managers. So all of their action items, insight into candidates that are going to be, or employees that are going to be starting in the near future. Um, as well as some key data points around their requisitions, approval, and other information. Um, it looks kind of similar to our, to our recruiter dashboard, but you'll notice it's a little bit pared down, a little bit less information. That's because our hiring leaders in this situation don't have as much involvement in terms of a phase and state. They're only looking at specific phases and states. They're not looking at everything in the entire CSP. Um, so just bringing that information that pertains directly to them is what it was what this is designed to do. So you'll see again action items at the top listed out all of their pending starts. They're able to see where candidates are stuck, if they're stuck, how long they've been stuck for. They have insight into how long their requisitions have been opened, where their requisitions are sitting in the organization if they have an over a, a big organization. Um, as well as if, if you saw at the bottom there they have insight into their time to fill how long they have been filling their, how long it's been taking them to fill their past requisitions so that they can see and benchmark uh, anything moving forward. Similar to our recruiter dashboard, they're also able to filter using any of those filters at the top. So maybe they want to look at their recs and applications relating to a specific job family. They just have to click on that job family and then again the entire dashboard is going to update so now that they're looking at um, all of the applications and requisitions pertaining to that job family. And that's again going to be true for all of our filters. And those filters, similar to the columns that we discussed, can be changed around, right? Maybe our recruiters finding that they need to start filtering by something else. Maybe it's department, maybe it's business unit, whatever it is, that can be added um, or changed uh, or swapped around for another, for another filter. So from our hiring, or sorry, from our recruiter perspective, we took a look at some of our action items. Um, again, those are available to our hiring managers, but just to give a little bit of flavor of what some of the other capabilities of the dashboard are, we're going to drill into one of the graphs that our hiring manager has in front of them. Um, so you'll notice our graph up there, the requisitions uh, graph. That gives them insight into how long their recs have been open, broken down by certain buckets. They're able to see, um, you know, an over 60 day, under 60 day, and, and then uh, drill down accordingly to get to that requisition information that they need. 
So, for instance, uh, maybe we've logged in. We want to see all of those requisitions that have been open for the longest. All we're going to have to do is click on whatever wedge we want to look at, maybe in this case, recs that have been open for more than a year. So we'll just bring our mouse um, on over to the graph, select the applicable wedge, and then again, up is going to pop a table. It's going to list out all those requisitions that make up that bucket, um, and then they're able to see the details relating to those requisitions, how long they've been open for, and then uh, uh, you know, some, you know, some other key information as well. You'll also notice that they have a link similar to the recruiters. They want to be able to go to that specific requisition. They're just going to be able to go to that column, find the row that they're looking for, and then it's going to link them out once they click on it into the front end where it's going to show that requisition uh, that lives in that bucket. So they're able to see the details of that rec from a more uh, typical standpoint, what they're usually typically looking at in ORC. They're able to take action, make any changes that they need to, all there and all easy to get to. So again, our, recruiter, our, our hiring manager dashboard, similar to the recruiter dashboard, I guess, in, in concept, but catered and tailored to their needs providing them with the information, the data points that they're going to need to, to structure their day, to engage with their candidates, um, be, you know, providing them the, the ability to filter down, make any changes, uh, find the appropriate audiences, and then access those candidates in, directly into the front-end UI. All right, so just a quick review here um, for, I know we went, you know, we went through all these dashboards. Just a quick for, for review purposes, our recruiter dashboard, designed for recruiters, tailored to their information, lists out all of their action items, gives them insight into how long candidates have been sitting stagnant in their process, as well as how long requisitions have been sitting stagnant, and all sorts of other information. Our candidate information dashboard, that web, that spider web, shall I say, catch all spot for that key information that recruiters are looking at when considering every single application and bringing that information to the forefront, allowing them to see that historical information, allowing them to see that cross requisition information uh, easily and accessibly. And then finally, our hiring manager dashboard, similar to our recruiter dashboard, but tailored and catered to the needs of hiring managers. What action items do they have in the candidate selection process? What are their requisitions looking like? Where are they open? All that information pertaining to hiring managers and allowing them to engage, click in, drill down, and, and respond um, to any candidate application that they're wanting to look at. So now that we've uh, walked through the dashboards, how they look, how they feel, how they talk to each other, um, let's take a look and see what the process to build these dashboards were um, and then the ultimate impact that they've made for ANOVA uh, and the potential impact that they can make for other re recruiting organizations. So um, these dashboards, you know, they're going to be similar to Rome. They were not built in a day. This was an ongoing process that was highly iterative. And it really took a lot of engagement, not only from the HRIS team, from the consulting team, but from the TA recruiting team. We really need to get an understanding of what they do, how they do it, how they think, and then build a tool that's going to reflect that. So this was a highly iterative process. ANOVA was fantastic with engaging different teams throughout the organization to really get together and, and come up with the best tool possible. So highly, you know, highly iterative, a lot of different versions. Um, that went on to create, to create what we saw today. Again, we really wanted to keep our overarching goals in mind throughout the entire process, so not losing sight of what the actual purpose of this was. It's easy to get caught up in the minutia of, of all the information that they wanted to see. We really wanted to continue to make sure we focused these dashboards on the informational needs for recruiters, for hiring leaders, 
and giving them the tools that they need to then, to then access that information accordingly. Um, so really focusing on providing them with what they need to see and then the action ability part, you know, so they can actually go in and take action from there. So the impact, right? We've built all these things, we put them live. You know, what was next? What happened? How did, how did the organization take it? Um, well, I'm, you know, excited to share with you all that these dashboards now drive the entire recruiting workflow uh, for Innova. So the hiring leaders, the recruiters, they're the ones engaging with the CSP, and these are the tools that they're now using every single day to engage, uh, to engage with that data, to see that data, and actually uh, move candidates along the process. So these are now the tools that, that, they're, that they're starting their days with, and they're actually processing candidates from these. Um, Innova, as a recruiting organization, has noticed a tremendous increase in efficiency, not only at the leadership level, not, not only is it just their leaders noticing that their recruiters are working more effectively and efficiently, the recruiters themselves are really taking pride in how fast and efficiently they're able to process candidates and draw in that key talent um, in, a, in, a fish, in an efficient and effective way. Um, so it's really, you know, it's really been great not only for the leadership, of course, you know, they're meeting all their metrics. The recruiters are now having less frustration in their day-to-day -day job um, and, it, and have really in increased their uh, efficiency tremendously. And then finally, a, a kind of unintended consequence that we didn't expect, but we're happy that kind of it came out of this was now that the recruiters had this tool, now that they were really finding a, a topical way to engage with Oracle recruiting, they were, more, you know, they were proud to be Oracle users. They were really excited about ORC, what it had to offer, what it does, um, and they were excited about the tool that they were using. They were really satisfied um, that this was the direction the business decided to go. Um, and now they're, you know, they're proud Oracle users um, and have really developed a loyalty to, to Oracle Cloud Recruiting and their other modules as a result of this. So that's been, that's been a great kind of sub, uh, sub um, achievement for this project. So what's next, right? These dashboards are delivered, they're live, they're using them. But that's not it, you know, that's not, that's not the, the end point. Um, Innova and, and their HRIS team and their consul us as consultants, we are in, you know, now that we're in the mindset of really bringing this data forward, really bringing this data to, uh, to the forefront in order to, to drive the way that they're doing work, we want that to continue. We want that continuous improvement to really progress on into the future. These, these dashboards, the team is ready uh, to, to constantly be adapting for any changes in the market, any changes in their recruiting process, any changes in their, in their overall ecosystem. These dashboards are going to continue just as they evolved during the creation process. They're going to continue to evolve um, post-live and, 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 and always be improving. And then additionally, um, other areas of ANOVA as an organization, they've seen the success that the recruiting team has had with these dashboards, right? So they're now getting in the mindset of, hey, maybe we can build a similar tool that's going to help our people do what they need to do. Um, they're constantly coming up with new use cases, the HR team, the leadership teams, they're all wanting dashboards now because of the success that they've seen with the recruiting team. So those new use cases are going to continue to flow in and then the process of creating continuously improvement, that's going to be a constant ongoing, ongoing thing for them now. Um, and it's really going to change the way that they, that they work and the way that they look at their data. So at the beginning, I did challenge you all to, to look at the challenges, to look at the issues Innova was facing and really, uh, really start to draw parallels to your own. Um, now, as you, leave, as you leave the session today, as you start to uh, engage with some of your other colleagues, some other people at this, at this Ascend conference, now ask yourself, ask yourself the question that you see up here on the board. Really start to think about how the challenges you're facing can be solved with the use of the data that you already have presented in a way that's going to help your team. Um, so just want to leave you all with that. 
uh, as you walk out of here today, how can I use actionable reporting to drive business further? Thank you all so much for attending today. I uh, definitely want to open up the floor for any questions. Feel free to scan our QR code as well to learn some more about our organization. And uh, if we don't get to, to some of the questions, we can definitely connect offline um, or, or after this session as well. But definitely want to give anyone uh, the opportunity to ask some questions. Yes? Two, yeah, sure. When it comes to hiring manager access, mm -hmm. there is a lot of limited visibility mm -hmm. in the Right. But managers can only see. So with these dashboards, is it only their like specific LLC or business that they see, or do these dashboards allow them to see everything? Yeah, good question. So in the case of hiring managers, um, this is just going to be the information that's in their purview, right? So if they're recruit, if they're hiring just for one business unit, one department, whatever it is. That's the information that's gonna, they're going to see. It's going to be reflective of their security access. So if they're able to access it in the, you know, in the regular UI, they'll be able to see it on the dashboard and it'll be restricted to that. Um, second question, and I don't know, other people may not be familiar with it, but in one of the new, well, the next new release, they've given us the security for it, but there's a recruiting activity center mm -hmm. coming. How is that going to be comparative So that's a good question. I haven't really looked uh, at that at that new feature. Yeah, I know it's coming out with, with 23C, um, but just depending on the details of that, depending on what the content it's actually going to provide, um, the dashboard might be catered around that information. If they're if they're pr preferring to look at it that way, you know, we can adapt the dashboard to to meet that. Um, and again, that's kind of part of that continuous improvement process. New releases are going to be coming out all the time. Maybe someday this, this will be obsolete, but um, you know, just continuing to adapt the tool to, to any new content, to any new changes in the market, that's, that's what they're planning to do. Yeah, but good question. Yes? Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah, so that's going to depend on how you want to set up your security. Um, in this particular case, the hiring managers do not have access to that cross-requisition information. That's just on the recruiter level. Um, if you wanted to set up your security in a way that could do that, that's definitely possible. But we're, we're typically seeing that, you know, we're not wanting our hiring managers to have all that kind of information, so they're not going to have access to it. Good call out. And then, yes, question from you. Like in, in the UI itself? Yeah. yeah, so that's going to be using a page integration. So you're just going to create a custom page on that ORC section. Um, you'll create the new tab and then add it with Page Composer. Um, so that'll be creating the page using page integration and then adding the, adding the actual dashboard content directly from OTBI using Page Composer. Good, good question there. Yes. You went from the client having no visibility to now having robust dashboard to view and see if any of you got the information overload, and if so, does the dashboard um, support personalization if people want to say, can I hide some filters on another look at? Can I hide some action items on another look at? Either, either of those yeah. are Good question. Um, so we didn't run into the situation where there was information overload. Um, they wanted this, they wanted to see that information, so they were actually really excited to get it in front of them. Um, we didn't necessarily run into that problem. We, that was also avoided by, you know, all this iteration that we did. There was instances where there was content on the dashboard that they didn't like. That was ultimately taken out, swapped, and changed around for some other stuff. Um, so that didn't, that wasn't really necessarily a challenge for us. Um, in terms of personalizing the experience, personalizing the look, um, for this particular delivery, 
the dashboard was standard for the different audiences, so all recruiters were going to see the same things, all hiring managers were going to be the see, see the same things, um, but there is the ability in OTBI in the dashboards to do different collapses, different, different kinds of things, um, so that if maybe one user is not looking at a particular graph or particular item, they can collapse it, it will stop showing for them, um, and then that'll be, that'll be how they view the data. Good question, though. Anything else? Yes, Pam. Um, uh huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, good question. So for any of these new fields that are coming out, such as, such as the one you're referring to, um, it's going to be simple. Now that it's all built out, all of the reports are in their OTBI catalog. All the HRIS person is going to have to do is, is go into the table, go into the, the prompt, the filter, whatever it is, and just add that new field. Um, and then it's going to show up dynamically across, across the board. Um, so not necessarily something that they're going to have to engage an outside party with, but just kind of part of that ongoing maintenance uh, and really just taking into account any new features and functionality that come out. Yeah. Any other any other questions? Yes. Yeah, it was a, probably about three to four months, um, but that was starting from scratch, right? We didn't. We we came in with absolutely no idea of what they wanted to do, um, and then ultimately landed on the solution and then built it out from there. So this particular design build delivery was about like a three to four month process. Um, but then from there, you know, in the original rollout, we originally rolled out with just the recruiter dashboard, and then the other two kind of came to follow, and that was a lot easier considering we had the, you know, a lot of the reports in place, a lot of the, the ideas in place, um, you know, for, for those two items. And then, did you have a question in the back there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, it really for that I've I've run into the same thing with a lot of the other dashboards I built. It really depends on how much data you're pulling in, um, and what it's filtering down to. So, because these dashboards are pulling in only requisition information from one, and they're only pulling in requisition information that pertains to the recruiter or the hiring leader. They're not pulling in everything necessarily. Um, that makes it a little bit faster in terms of performance. Um, so that hasn't really been much of an issue, uh, much of an issue with this particular dashboard, but um, that is a good call out for, for some of the other ones. Yeah. Any other, any other questions? Anyone just wants to go get a drink? <laughs> yeah, I'll be there with you, so. All right, well, thank you all for coming. It's been a pleasure. Happy to connect afterwards, and, and thank you again.